after shooting that segment about the belt and thinking that this was on all the way, I'm, I'm now kind of thinking that it's not quite on far enough and it's probably because it's too tight. So I've gone ahead and backtracked a little bit and, and loosened up the adjusters. Uh, this is, this is kind of a pain to do. And what I found works the best is I've got a little quarter inch, half inch here, so I can loosen up that one. And I'll, I'll take you around to the other side. So you can see that a little bit better. And then for this one on this side, I just use a long extension on an, on a long deep socket half inch. Now I've already loosened this up and I've already loosened the bottom bolt up so that it, it should move okay. And it, it's still just kind of a, a pain. That's on a little bit better and I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. And also, uh, the tension is, is pretty close. I, I, obviously, I'm going to check it again once I'm done. And this is actually the one that I'm using to, to bring it forward. So as I tighten this front nut, it brings the whole gearbox forward. And then it's just a matter of cinching all of the other adjuster down, this adjuster down, and then tightening the, the fixing bolts. So next we're going to look at the outrigger plate. And this plate goes on here. This recess here goes around that bearing. These are little things that will be tightened in to fit into the recess there to keep this from spinning. So that'll be an adjustment procedure for later. But for right now, I'm just going to get the four fixing bolts for this ready and assemble that. The fixing bolts are two shouldered ones that go in the deep holes there, here, and there. And then two short ones that go towards the front. So there's the plate in place, and I just need to snug these up a little bit. You use 3 16 Allen for the shoulder bolts and a 5 30 seconds for the shallow ones. And per the instructions, used a little bit of blue Loctite, medium strength Loctite on there just to keep those in place. And these are the adjusters that there's a, a little rounded part on the back side of that that hits these holes to stop this from spinning. And right now it looks like it's too tight. So again, like I said, there'll, there'll be some adjustment for that. The next step is to put some of the clutch plates in and then we'll be putting the nut on this and, and tightening down the clutch hub. So we start with a plain plate that is part of the kit. Now, as I mentioned before, I had ordered a brand new, you know, complete Barnett kit. Um, treated myself to some new clutch plates, which I've, I've never done before. Uh, I, I don't think I've ever bought new clutch plates for anything in 30 years of motorcycle riding. Um, I guess I'm just really cheap that way. So that's all the clutch plates in. And before I put the pressure plate on, the next part of the instructions is to put the, the Belleville spring washer on. And then the clutch nut. And in a minute, I will be tightening that down. So that's also gonna happen off camera. One of the important things to note about this is, is the instructions mention not to use the, what is it, 65 to 70 foot pounds of torque on that nut. Uh, the entire clutch basket is pushing up against that tiny little circlip that's in the groove that we replaced a little while ago. And 
it can handle 70 foot pounds because I've done that in the past, but it just really doesn't need to be that tight. So we're going to go ahead and tighten this down. We're using a Belleville spring washer instead of a lock tab, which I think is much better. And you, you basically just need to tighten it down until that spring washer is flattened out and you'll be fine. So that's my setup for tightening that nut. 13 16th wrench and just uh, that pin holder. So with that setup, I can get that nut uh, plenty tight enough. The next job is to install the clutch push rod seal. You can see that's a little O-ring in there. And this is a seal that screws onto the end there and seals the push rod tunnel from getting oil from the gearbox coming through into the clutch. First thing to do, put a little bit of oil on there just to drop. Make sure that's on, on the O-ring nice. And then screw that on. Now, the important thing here is the clearance. This needs to screw on all the way and still have some room there behind that. And I've got plenty of room. After making sure that I had enough clearance, you're supposed to take it back off, put a little uh, thread locker, blue medium strength on there, and then put it back on and tighten it down. So I, I've taken it off and I put some thread locker in there and I'm gonna snug it down here in just a second. And at that point, you can put the final plate in and then the pressure plate. Like that. So once I snug that down and we put the diaphragm spring and retaining clip on, which is fairly straightforward to do, uh, the clutch will be done. So I'm gonna do that next. So there's the clutch spring compressor. You can see that the, the spring that retains the pressure plate is in place. And I've made sure that it's completely up inside that groove. Uh, that is very important. Once that's done, then you can take this off, loosen off the, the clutch spring compressor, and it should tighten up the clutch. As you can see, now it's not spinning as easily as it was because this has been backed off all the way. And the clutch is assembled with the exception of the adjuster. The rotor for the alternator installation steps was actually on the page before the clutch assembly, but I skipped that page. So now I'm gonna go back and do that. So we've got in the kit, there's a new key in there uh, that's been put on. And there's also a, a Belleville washer and a new nut for this as part of the instructions. So easy enough to install. The next part in the instructions uh, were to do the rotor, which I've done, and I haven't torqued it down yet, but I'll, I will do that uh, soon. But then it was to fix the stator. And this is a three-phase stator that I added, or I bought probably 20 years ago. I, I don't know. But um, it, you should be able to see the horrible mess that is the wires coming out of that stator. Um, I've, I've kind of repaired and, and babied those connections a little bit uh, over the last probably 10 years. Uh, they seem to crack pretty easily once they start getting hard because you, you've you all of the heat cycles, the heat from the engine and so forth, they get kind of brittle or the insulation does. But at this point, I, I'm kind of feeling short of taking all of this off and and completely replacing these wires uh, this this is just not not worth continuing with so I'm gonna end up buying a new stator for that and I'll, I'll show you how I install and space the stator later 
At this point, since I'm kind of at a stopping point, since I need to get another rotor, um, I'll also talk a little bit about the, the electrical instructions. This is a mess. This is an old battery that is not going to cut it. I need to still clean this up. So the first part of the instructions were to run the wiring harness before you started all of this. And I did that, but I didn't, I didn't talk about it on the video because I, I knew I would be coming back to that. One of the instructions is to install the starter relay right there. I've had this bike for a long time. It's It's gone through a, a number of iterations. And most recently, in preparation for getting the electric starter, I, I was doing some work on the wiring. So trying to clean it up, um, you know, 20-year-old wiring harnesses uh, don't look new any longer. So it, it needed a little bit of work. And you can see I, I've, I've still got all of this apart. Um, this is, uh, I'll just point out, a maintenance item. Uh, everybody hates on these Lucas Bullet connections. Um, I, I don't mind them, but when I was doing this uh, a couple of weeks ago, I took every single one of these apart, um, used a heat gun to soften this so I could pull the metal pieces out, and found at least eight of the metal inserts broken. So... That's that's almost half of these. And if it's broken, it's not going to do its job very well. So it's definitely a maintenance item. You, you do need to look at those if you want to keep those bullet connectors. And like I said, I, I do like the bullet connectors. The next thing I'm going to do is hook up some of the wiring. That is actually the first step in the documentation or the instructions is to put the wiring harness in place and, and hook up the connections that would be made in the headlight shell if you're using the supplied switch. I'm not going to use the supplied switch at this point, so I've done things a little bit differently, but I've already put the wiring harness in place. I think you can see that. That is the relay. It's not tightened down yet. I'll do that when I'm happy with it. I've also got the wire coming from this. Now, I have switched my bike over to negative ground, so I'm taking the fused wire that comes from that relay and the wiring harness and run it to positive. I'm taking the unfused wire that comes from that wiring harness and running it to negative. In addition to that, I've gone around and I am not gonna use the supplied switch Nothing against that switch. It's a very nice switch and, and maybe I'll change at some point. But I like the idea of using the stock switches. So a long time ago, when I wired this bike up 20 years ago, I switched the horn to be on the left handlebar instead of the right. And I wired up a kill switch for the uh, ignition. So I still have that. I'm still using the horn here because that just makes sense to me. And I am using this now, which was the horn switch originally to be the starter switch. So I've kind of got this wired a little crazy. As you can see, purple and black is going back to where the horn would be. And it is this white and red, which runs over there. The starter, is coming from, now you can see it, the purple and black that comes from this switch. And I've taken the, the long wire that's part of the wiring harness supplied with the kit and cut it off and put a belt bullet connection there. So normally in the instructions, you would run that all the way up into the headlight. You would take the supplied switch and mount it up here on, on the handlebars or wherever you wanted, but I would presume you'd, you'd put it here and wire that inside the headlight shell. But like I said, I'm not doing that at this time anyways. So we can test this now. I've got my UASA 18 hour battery, which is brand new for this. And what we can do just to make sure that the wiring is working, um, we can test it. So I will also show you this. This is the wire that will go to the starter. And this would be run to, in my case, uh, well, actually probably in any case, to the 
um, positive side of the battery. This is the wire coming from, that is screwed onto the back of the primary. And this is also gonna go to the battery, but it's gonna go to the negative. So essentially you're gonna have these nice large cables that provide direct battery current to the starter so that it has all the power that it needs. The relay that you've mounted, that I've mounted back here, is just to turn that whole circuit on and off. So what I've done right now is, as I said a minute ago, I've, I've wired up the relay, and when I turn on power, which is right there, so I can see the tail lights on, and when I do that and hit that switch, I don't know if you can hear that, but more importantly, because I have wired up my multimeter to the control wire here that comes from the wiring harness, this is what actually gets 12 volts when you trip the relay or, or throw the relay into action. So we can watch that. As I hold down the button, you should hear the click of the relay and you should see the multimeter go to 12. So that starter circuit appears to be the way we want it. Next step is going to be to actually install the starter.